my name is Lindsay Murray. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am a YouTuber here on YouTube and I make videos that are very girly and bougie on a budget but also I talk a lot about chronic illness and one of them I will be talking about today which is my gastroparesis and I do touch on my pots as well in this video if you are wondering I do talk about both anyway today I'm going to be answering your questions about gastroparesis I put a little question thing on Instagram if you want the opportunity to ask me questions for future videos or to get more involved in my life and follow me on my story then my Instagram will be on the screen as well as linked down below but yeah if you would like to to follow me on my journey and managing a life with chronic illness while being in college just you should subscribe and join the fit right and don't forget to turn on that bell so that you know whenever I upload so let's just get right on into this video and I'm going to start answering your questions this is my phone case if you were wondering love her had her on my phone for a while now so just a little disclaimer, uh, please consult with a medical professional for any advice or diagnoses. Do not use this video as any way to diagnose yourself. This is just simply for educational and entertainment purposes and to raise awareness for gastroparesis, for POTS, for chronic illness and living with chronic illness life. My heart rate alarm is going off, how fitting, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Like, I'm not a medical professional, I am just a patient who deals with gastroparesis and POTS, and I'm just simply sharing my experience and my advice and what information I can with you to spread awareness. So, that is all that I'm trying to do, but please consult with a professional for any medical advice or diagnosis. So the first question that I got is, what is it? So what is gastroparesis? So put simply, it basically means paralysis or partial paralysis of the stomach. So it means that my stomach muscles no longer work properly to digest and break down food. So <laughs> as a result, what I can eat is very limited and it causes a lot of pain, a lot of nausea, a lot of vomiting, and a lot of things that are not fun which i will talk more about as i continue on with answering your questions but that kind of summarizes what gastroparesis is the next question is what is the hardest part of having gastroparesis so for me in particular i would say not being able to eat certain things that i really really want and that i really really miss such as pizza for example so that's probably one of the hardest parts of gastroparesis is the very restricted limited diet that you have and the food options that you have to choose from if you don't want to be in a crap ton of pain or ending up in the hospital it's been almost a month and i've been out of the hospital so far so I'm doing something right by sticking to this like liquid diet listening to my doctors nausea vomiting and pain I think is like the trio of those things it's, it's the worst part about the gastroparesis overall does your pots make it worse or the other way around so for sure so <laughs> if you don't know one of the symptoms of POTS is nausea and vomiting two of the symptoms of gastroparesis are also nausea and vomiting so both issues can cause nausea and vomiting as well as a, t a ton of other issues that I deal with day to day but for sure my POTS definitely makes my gastroparesis worse and vice versa whenever I have really bad vomiting episodes where I can't get them to stop which is most every time that I end up throwing up it turns into cyclic vomiting and which I had as a child but then I went away for a period of time and came back once I got my concussion aka my POTS when I'm throwing up it throws my body so out of whack and my pots just just does not like it at all and it oftentimes causes me to faint and or have non-epileptic seizures so for sure they play off of each other and I think make my nausea and vomiting worse because I have two things that are like causing it it's just a lot to combat so yeah they my pots and my gastroparesis definitely dance around a little bit it's not a fun game for me but <laughs> my health issues like to do that how long did it take for you to get diagnosed so this is difficult because i honestly don't know how long i've had gastroparesis like 
I've definitely probably had it for several years. Ever since I got my gallbladder surgery, uh, ever since I got my gallbladder removed, I do have a video on my channel about that if you are interested, but I do not have a gallbladder. But I have had GI issues for as long as I can remember, and at first we thought it was sphincter of OD dysfunction, the issues that I was having, because that runs in my family, and also dying gallbladders runs in my family as well, so like my family has a history of GI issues, so it's not very surprising. Luna came and joined me while I'm filming. Look at her. She's grooming herself. <laughs> yes, my Christmas tree is still up, don't judge me. I would say it probably took about two years for me to get diagnosed with this. I have had symptoms and issues for several years, but the last two years I can recollect having a significant more amount of issues with my GI tract and my digestion. <laughs> what was your experience with food before you got diagnosed? So I've always had a very complex relationship with food, especially for the last few years. Like it's been physically painful to eat for the last few years because of the gastroparesis and my other GI issues like my dying gallbladder and my SMA syndrome, my superior mesenteric artery syndrome. Like I have a lot of GI issues going on and I have for a long time. It's always been difficult. I, I don't even know where I'm going with this, but I've never had a super healthy relationship with food and that's partly because of mental health reasons and partly because of physical health reasons and all that my body has been through. Honestly, that is what I have for you. <laughs> like, I don't really know what else to say. Like, it's an ever-growing, ever-changing relationship. Whatever. Next question. I was recently diagnosed with this illness and want to know how long it takes to manage. So, if I remember correctly, gastroparesis is a chronic illness and a chronic condition, which means that there is no cure for it. It can have periods where it's not as bad or and it can have flares where it's really bad but it doesn't ever really go away because it is a chronic issue there like I said there are periods where it can be better and more manageable especially if you avoid sugar foods and are on medication that helps if you have a combination of things to your treatment plan you can resolve some of your symptoms and ease some of your symptoms but the gastroparesis itself I'm pretty sure is a chronic condition so that can be lifelong. <laughs> Hate to break it to you, but you're kind of stuck with it. But don't lose hope because there are a lot of options out there and resources uh, to find sort of treatment. So the next question is, do you still eat? <laughs> straight to it but uh yes i do still eat i primarily eat like soups yogurts liquids uh juices smoothies things that are easier to digest but i do still eat things orally by mouth i'm still able to take my medications orally by mouth that does not come without pain like i said uh it doesn't matter whether i do eat something orally or don't eat something orally i'm gonna have stomach pain and cramping and bloating and on discomfort that that's just part of it and my other GI issues that I have. Eating is very important because I don't want my stomach to completely seize up and stop working. So continuing to get at least some liquid like oral consumption keeps my system going and alive and at least trying to move things through my body how it should. Uh, it definitely does not empty properly or digest properly and that causes a lot of pain for me, but uh, yes, I do still eat because it is essential to make sure that my stomach function it stays at least where it is. Even though it's already crappy, I don't want it to get even worse and stop working altogether. I do currently have a PIC line, which stands for Peripherally Inserted Central Catheter. It's basically a central line that goes into an artery and that goes directly into my heart. Through this, I receive TPN, which is basically a form of liquid nutrition. So I get my TPN every night for 12 hours overnight. Because I am so limited with what I can eat right now and only being able to really eat like 
like soup, yogurt, ice cream, being it really limited with like the foods I can eat right now. It's important to get enough nutrition to sustain myself, my body, and to stay healthy and to continue in the recovery process of my gastroparesis and my other issues that I have going on. So, <laughs> so that's my pick line and that is also how I receive nutrition since my nutrition is very limited. I do still eat, but I do also get nutrition via my pick line. We're gonna get real real in this video. Has gastroparesis affected your body image or relationship with food? 100%. Yes, um, I know it doesn't with everyone. Everyone is different. Like I said, I have always had a very complex relationship with food. I have, I have at least since high school and I keep looking away from the camera because I don't like getting personal <laughs> or vulnerable. <laughs> but then I remember that you could be helping people out there and it's okay. I have battled with body dysmorphia since high school and as well as another issue that I just am not ready to publicly discuss or talk about. And so yeah, having body dysmorphia, I've never really been good at seeing myself for what I truly am or what I truly appear or look like. Having this gastroparesis and being put in physical pain whenever I eat is just, it feels like a punishment almost. Even though it's not, it's eating, it's part of life. It's something that you need to do to live. It just, it has definitely tarnished my relationship with food a lot, as well as my body image. Yeah, I would say for sure it has impacted me greatly. Something I'm working through every day in therapy. I'm not in therapy every day, but I am in therapy and working through it and journaling and doing things for my mental health every single day to better myself and to continue going in the right direction with my mental health and hopefully with my physical physical health too. I know that my illnesses are chronic and that I this is the life as someone with a disability, but it is just something that you have to live with and make the best out of your situation and try to live it to your fullest potential. So yeah, I don't know. I rambled and got off topic, but that's all I'm gonna say about that. Moving on. <laughs> How did you get diagnosed with the gastroparesis? Love you. Thank you. I love you too. The main test to get diagnosed with a with gastroparesis is a gastric emptying study. If you have gastroparesis, you have delayed gastric emptying. So the gastric emptying study, blah, it's a tongue twister if you say it too many times, but that is the study that they use most often to diagnose gastroparesis. There are often other, I think there's like two other tests, but I'm not educated on them. You can Google them if you'd like, but that is how I got diagnosed personally. What symptoms do you deal with daily? Nausea. Nausea is probably one of the worst things too about gastroparesis and POTS is the nausea is just horrible. The vomiting episodes suck and they take such a toll on my body. Pain. I deal with pain every single day. Like I said, whether I eat or drink or not, it, my stomach hurts and I get stomach pain every single day. Bloating. Bloating sucks. I get that daily as well as getting full very fast when I eat or not having much of an appetite. Inconsistent stool, <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. Um, either like not coming enough or coming too much too fast, uh, if you know what I mean. So those are also things that I deal with. So those are the main symptoms that I deal with in day to day with gastroparesis. If you want a video, uh, let me. Ha! <laughs> That's funny. Actually, not even planned, but my next question is not a question, but can you do a day in the life with gastroparesis and a what I eat in a day with gastroparesis love you? Ha! <laughs> That's funny. Yes, I will do a what I eat in a day with gastroparesis. It probably won't be that interesting because it's, it's very limited, but I can also do a day in the life with gastroparesis for sure. I, it's already on my filming list and it is coming soon. All right. Are there different levels of severity when it comes to gastroparesis? So 100%. This is kind of goes along with any chronic illness. There's I think, actually I don't want to say that, I don't know for sure, but I feel like with a lot of chronic illnesses, at least with the ones I deal with, I feel there are totally different levels of severity when it comes to it. Not that it matters whatever degree of severity you have your chronic illness at, it doesn't matter, it doesn't define you, it doesn't take away from your struggle, you know, like your journey is your journey and it's different for everyone. Everyone's health is different, everyone's body responds differently to different treatments. It, 
chronic illness is really a very individualized experience from person to person, but there are definitely different levels of severity. There are some people with gastroparesis who don't need like a pick line or a feeding tube or um, et cetera, and who can just live off of like limiting their foods and avoiding foods that trigger episodes and things like that. So there's definitely different levels. Some people can function a lot better, but still have pain, still have bloating, still have like all the stuff that's annoying and goes with it, but sometimes it's like less severity. I deal with a lot in day-to-day -day life, but you get used to it when you have chronic illness. Like you just get used to putting on a smile amidst how crappy you're feeling. Like that's just part of it, but it's different every day. And every day is a new battle and you never really know what's gonna come at you. <laughs> so your level personally of severity can change over time as well as like there are different levels of severity from like people to people as well. Which came first, your POTS or your gastroparesis diagnosis? So my POTS diagnosis came first, that came my my freshman or my sophomore year of high school, college, college. I think sophomore year of college, uh, so my POTS diagnosis came first. It came three years before my gastroparesis diagnosis. So this is a great question. This is exactly what I was trying to say in the previous question <laughs> when I kept rambling, but are there times where your symptoms are less or more intense slash severe vice versa? So 100% there are times when I have flares, which my symptoms are horrible, they're terrible, they're debilitating, I can't get out of bed, I can't walk, I can't like function as a human being in a flare. And that's when I typically end up in the hospital and it's just not a good time but there are times where I'm functional and I'm able to live my life like I am right now. I am doing my TPN every night so I'm still getting the proper nutrition I need, but I'm also doing college and school and all the other things that I have to do. I'm working a part-time job remotely right now and yeah, uh, but there are definitely times where my symptoms are like more severe and less severe. And it can definitely range and you never know what you're gonna get that day. Like you never know what symptoms you're gonna get or how bad they're gonna be. It's just a fun game we get to play every single day with chronic illness. <laughs> but anyways, next. How do you talk to your friends, boyfriend, girlfriend, family about gastroparesis slash chronic illness? Honestly, I mean, if you're talking to your friends like close friends or uh, your family, hopefully you're close with whoever it is that you're talking to, whether that's your family or friends or a significant other, you just gotta be honest. And I think a really big thing is telling them what you need from them because that is already letting them know how they can help you and what they can best do to assist you and live the best life that you can. Because with life with chronic illness has a lot of limitations and a lot of things that come along with it. And a lot of hospital visits and a lot of medicines and treatments and things that you gotta do and deal with. So I would say just be honest tell them what your diagnosis is. You can explain a little bit or you can see if they have questions. You can kind of gauge the conversation and take the lead. Like if they start asking questions, like you can just continue the conversation by answering their questions and just seeing where it goes. Or you can just kind of like say what you need to say and then be like, what? <laughs> but I do that sometimes. I Sometimes when I get nervous, I just kind of babble and I say everything and then I'm like, questions? <laughs> so, um, but just be honest, just tell them what's going on. I'm sure they're gonna be glad that you're consulting and them and that you're like telling them about your health issues because that's like can be a really personal thing. Communicate what do you need from them, how they can support you through dealing with your chronic illness and your disability. Yeah, uh, that's all I can really say. <laughs> this one says, can you drink alcohol with gastroparesis? So this kind of goes along with what I was saying earlier in terms of it's different for everyone. Everyone is different. Uh, I personally cannot drink because of medications that I'm on, but I also really am not supposed to drink for my POTS because it can make me dehydrated and which is really bad for POTS. And <laughs> it can make my symptoms a lot worse. And now whenever I try to drink alcohol, cause I am 21, I am of legal drinking age. I am 21 years old, but I, like on my birthday, I drank one mimosa and I ended up in the hospital throwing up that night. So I don't think I can drink alcohol anymore. So me personally, no, I, I don't drink alcohol. It's just dangerous for me uh, with my chronic illnesses and my health issues. So 
I, I'm sure you can. I'm sure people are different and other people do, but I just can't. <laughs> Does it affect your POTS symptoms too? When my gut is weird, it gives me palps and tacky. Yes, for sure. This is kind of goes along with the other question of like, does your POTS affect your gastroparesis and vice versa? Yes, it affects my POTS symptoms for sure. I have also gotten palpitations when I was having stomach issues and like pain, uh, so I can definitely relate to you on that. But yeah, for sure, it, my gastroparesis affects my POTS symptoms. Can you drink smoothies or is it strictly juice, water, etc. fluids? So I can drink smoothies. One of my favorite things to consume right now is smoothies from Smoothie King. Uh, I love their, uh, what is it called? Uh, their angel cake, angel food? angel food smoothie it's just strawberry banana with like sugar uh, I love getting that with added protein so that I can get some protein in but I do have to drink it slow because it will hurt my stomach but anything will so uh, it is kind of what it is but yes I can drink smoothies I can drink certain soups I we typically just strain it or I just don't eat the chunks in it how did you know you had it symptoms of gastro so I had never heard of gastroparesis before my doctors diagnosed it and I had three different doctors look at my gastric emptying study and say that I have severe gastroparesis so I did not really personally know that I had gastroparesis but this symptoms that I had was I was having very bad, very aggressive nausea, vomiting episodes. I was having very limited appetite. My heart rate alarm is going off again. I love pots and I love having racing heartbeats. Uh, I would get full very fast. Like I would not eat a lot of food and then I would be really full and I wouldn't understand why. I would not have much of an appetite. I would get really bad bloating after eating not a ton of food. I would have a lot of pain in my stomach and tummy like and cramping and just discomfort and pain. Uh, so those were my main symptoms. Okay, we're down to the last two questions. If you have stuck through the video this long and you are still watching, comment unicorn roses and I will heart and respond to your comment. How do you cope slash stay so positive with your gastroparesis pots and chronic illness basically like how do I stay positive with all my chronic illnesses I don't know honestly I feel like a big part of it is through sharing my story on YouTube and on Instagram and TikTok and I don't know just kind of sharing my chronic illness life and story on social media as well as like my college life and my fun life and like there's other things to life than just like my chronic illness like there's a lot more to me as a person than just that but I think something that helps me stay so positive is just knowing that by creating my content I could be helping other people out there I could be raising awareness for my illness that so many other people also have to struggle and deal with out there just knowing that I could be doing that like by making these videos and doing something I enjoy I could be potentially helping other people feel less alone raising awareness that is kind of why I do what I do so I do it all for you all so so much love one of the reasons I stay so positive is I just want to be able to help other people too last question do you know how long you will be on TPN also, hope you're doing well. Thank you so much. If you don't know, TBN, like I said, is my IV nutrition that I get via my pick line. So I do not know how long I will be on TPN or and or how long I will have my pick line. I got it in January, like mid-January, mid to the end of January. So it's almost been a month since I've had my pick. I am guessing it will be at least a few months that I will have this pick. We're just kind of taking it week by week, test by test, but I am at least probably planning on having it probably probably another month if I were to guess. I, I truly don't know. It could be longer. It could be shorter. All right, everyone. Well, that is it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that it was helpful and helped to raise some awareness for POTS and gastroparesis. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Comment below any video requests and don't forget to stop watching and subscribe to Join the Family. I will see you all in my next video. Love you. Bye.